Uh, welcome back and uh, good afternoon. Uh, so uh, I'm Marit, I'm the program manager driving the Trust Suite release process uh, to partners and to public release. And uh, today what I'm trying to do is basically run through the end-to-end -end process of how to get these test suites, how to run them, uh, how to configure, and you know all those details. So just touch uh, each of those areas end-to-end. -end. Um, so what I'll try to do uh, is I'll not get into very uh, specific details of every protocol, but I'll try to uh, keep this session a little bit abstract uh, or more generic so that it's applicable to all test suites, right? Uh, it's SMB or some other test suite. Uh, uh, most of our test suites follow same design process and guidelines. They make use of same tools. Uh, even though you might find uh, version uh, dependencies, though, uh, which I'll talk about. Uh, and whatever I'm going to uh, you know, present today, will probably be the same for most of the test suites. OK, so uh, let's start with some history. Uh, so uh, Keith has already mentioned uh, some you know, uh, in good detail. So originally, uh, you know, we started developing these test suites to test our technical documents in-house. Right? It, it was a humongous effort you know, spanning uh, years and then covering about 300 plus documents with you know about you know peak team of about 400 people, and uh, we basically tested against Windows as our primary implementation. So as as Keith was mentioning, so we uh, once the test suite was developed, we tested against Windows implementation just to ensure that the documentation is in sync with the uh, Windows implementation, uh, and. In addition, what we also did was we tested some of these protocols against partner implementations too, right? Uh, when partners come for events like these, Plugfest, Interoperability Labs, right? We did get some chance to basically test our uh, test their implementations uh, uh, with the test suite. Um, so now, so in most of these events, right? There, there was a, a question that you know partners always had, you know, hey, you know what? This is nice, you know, you have all these test suites, you know, we can run against these, but you know what, uh, you know, we, we hardly get, you know, a week's time, like every year, right? And that's it, right? Uh, why can't we take these to, you know, our premises and try to run them, right? Because, you know, once we run them, we'll probably, uh, it would be more productive for us to come to these events and then come with some uh, you know, pre-run tests, and then we know what the issues are, and then we we start coming here and debugging those those test suites and make make the session more useful and productive. Um, so, uh, you know, with that request in mind, what we started was we started with uh, you know this exercise of making test suites public. Right, first we wanted to release to partners on a uh, you know kind of a testing basis, and then eventually release to public. And uh, I'm glad to inform that today. We have actually have some tests which are ready right, to be downloaded. Um, and uh, these will probably increase over a period of time. right? Uh, most of these test suites are packaged as Windows installers. Um, I'll, I'll go through some of those objectives a little bit later. But uh, the idea is you know, we want to make the test suite, um, uh, what do you say, downloading and execution, the, the overall user experience as painless as possible. right? You know, uh, all of you are aware, I mean, doing protocol testing is, is not a trivial task, right? You have so many configurations, you have so many issues, you need to uh, configure environments and all that stuff. But uh, we try to, you know, at least uh, lessen that pain, uh, even though, you know, there are still uh, issues. I don't really say issues, but, uh, you know, uh, certain details that you have to do while configuring your implementation and the test suite. Uh, they work on physical and virtual machines, so you know uh, you, you can have a physical machine or a virtual machine. Though you know, uh, I actually suggest using virtual machines because you know you, ha you have you know more flexibility flexibility in terms of you know bringing them up and down and uh, changing the storing the state and snapshotting and all that functionality. Uh, they are designed to run against non-Windows implementations, uh, predominantly the server implementations. Uh, and 
also you know designed to cer certain extent uh, that they are configurable extendable also so i'll i'll talk about some of those uh, details in uh, in the coming slides and uh, like it, every other software right this, this is beta software uh, this is still under development i mean uh, we have certain development uh, cycles wherein periodically we uh, update the test suites uh, predominantly based on every new SKU that we release, new OS versions, or if the te technical document changes considerably. And uh, finally, yeah, please feel free to use these test suites, extend them, enhance them, and uh, I'll talk about a couple of uh, ways you can even innovate to basically integrate them back into your uh, production environment to like test test environment that is. Uh, the scope of test suites is uh, simple, like you know they test technical document against a given implementation, uh, and uh, as as Keith was mentioning a while ago, uh, what we actually do is extract requirements from the technical document, and I'll show you how. Uh, and, and basically test those requirements, right? So basically if a technical document says, hey, you know, the client sends this request with this, this bit set to something, and you get a response back, and this bit is set to so and so, right? That's the statement that we uh, test, right? And we synthetically frame our packets, actually send that bit, and then once it's back, message is back, we validate. That's how, uh, uh, you know, the tests are validated. And the implementation and correlation with the TD, that's something that we do. And that's where we find a lot of issues in the documentation, a lot of gaps between you know, what the document says and uh, what Windows actually behaves. So our, our goal is to you know, bring it to zero or at least as, as, as less uh, uh, issues, as less number of issues as possible. Now, what is not, so the, these tests are not meant to replace your product tests, right? I mean, they are not really feature tests or scenario tests or security stress and other kind of tests that uh, your test teams uh, do right right on on a daily basis right so this is not to do that right so the the, the purpose of these test suites is not to replace those tests right but in a way to basically complement the technical documents and in terms of uh, uh, how the tests are written there's a one to one correspondence between the technical document and the test suite so we have a test suite for every technical document that, you know, of course, I mean, uh, some of them we may release, some of them we, we may not, but uh, the way it is designed is, you know, test suite covers only one technical document. So here are some of the goals. Uh, help partners test their implementation, right? Uh, Complement TD, uh, and also, as I said, you know, reduce the learning curve by, you know, creating documentation and all that. Uh, the other thing is the test suites are supported uh, through our doc help uh, alias, and uh, we support test suites as is. Like you know, if you make any modifications, then you know probably we may help, but you know we'll not be able to support these test suites. Uh, so primary delivery mode, uh, you know, so far we have done plug fest and interoperability labs, and now basically we have out of the band releases on Connect. Now, coming to the prerequisites, what do you need to run these test suites, right? So this is a typical scenario, right? It, it doesn't necessarily mean it's exhaustive. Uh, you can look at the documentation, which I'll uh, show in a short while. Uh, every test suite has its own set of requirements in terms of what hardware is required, what software stack is required, and so on. And also the tools that would be required to run the test suite. Uh, they vary. And I'll show you the documentation where you can find all that information. But at the minimum, you typically require a client or a driver computer wherein you run the test suite from, right, which is typically a Windows box, Windows 7 box, and then the implementation, right, the, the system under test, right, which can be a Windows as well as non-Windows implementation. A typical way to test is, you know, you benchmark these tests against Windows to make sure, you know, what is the expected behavior and then run against non-Windows, you know, to compare, right, so at least you have something to compare, right. But it, it's not really, uh, you know, uh, 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 mandatory requirement or anything like that. You can just go go ahead and then run against non-Windows straight away. Um, you might also need some additional machines if the protocol decide. I mean, uh, specifies so. Like for example, you may have domain controllers. You may have certification uh, certificate servers. You may have 
uh, you know, various other, uh, you know, proxies and other uh, services. So for that, you may need uh, additional machines or software uh, as determined by the, uh, uh, the, the protocol. Uh, you all, you'll also need an isolated test network, and uh, we strongly recommend that, right? Because uh, uh, I'll, I'll be, you know, running through some of the um, actual installation process. Uh, as as you know, these are um, test suites covering, you know, the protocol behavior and all that. So the tests do log a lot of PII information, basically personally identifiable information which would, uh, you know, be like from the configuration files and all, something like, you know, the user ID of the target machine that you're uh, trying to access, maybe the IP address uh, or even the password and all those, right? So basically, you should treat it like any other uh, resource, right, uh, in your network and definitely not run, let's say, on your laptop in a corporate environment, right, because all this information uh, is collected, but it's never stored or sent to Microsoft. But still, you know, the fact that all this information is collected in logs, you know, from a privacy perspective, it, it, it's, it's a better idea to, you know, completely run it in an isolated test network. Uh, so this is, uh, at the, the last point talks about some of the software uh, that's required. Again, you know, this is generic. Uh, some test suites, some components might or might not be required. And for all the details, you can look at the user guide, and I'll show that to you. Uh, you'd need Visual Studio, Spec Explorer, Protocol Test Framework, Protocol Test Library, and so on. For most part, apart from Visual Studio 2010, everything else is self-contained in the test suite package that you'll be downloading, right? So only thing that you might download additionally is Visual Studio 2010. Uh, evaluation version would also work, and if you have an MSDN license, then you can use that too, right? Um, in addition to that, you may also want to use, like, you know, let's say you don't have a license, you might, or for some other reason, if you want to go for a virtualization route, uh, you can use what is called as a VHD test drive program, wherein you have a pre-configured VHD, at least the base, bare bones uh, uh, OS, along with Visual Studio. I'll provide links for that too. And then you can directly download that and then copy this package over that machine and start running, right? So there is that flexibility as well. Uh, yeah, this is just a kind of di diagrammatic representation of the uh, kind of environment. So this is precisely what uh, we'll cover today. Um, now, again, it's end-to-end. -end. We'll try to download the test suite package, extract the installers, copy the installers, you know, install, uh, try to configure and run test suites. Um, we'll probably not cover the enha en enhance and extend part, uh, but for most part, you know, we'll touch each of those topics. Uh, this is a high-level scenario, uh, nothing special about it. Uh, so we have our developers creating the test suites and storing them on or uploading them on the connect site on a periodic basis. And uh, basically you have your uh, lab at your premises. Uh, again, this, this is depicting a more a virtualized scenario, but you know, you can go for physical machines too. What you typically do is uh, connect to Microsoft Connect. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do the demo shortly and get the binaries. And then optionally, if you want, you can also go to the VSD test drive program and download the virtual machines um, uh, on which you can run the test suites. Right. And uh, uh, you know, if you need any help, support in terms of running the test suites, or if you find some issues, bugs, and so on, uh, please feel free to you know, contact us uh, at doghelp at microsoft.com. That's our standard uh, support alias. Uh, Will was also mentioning about that in the morning. So that, that's our front-ending team uh, of escalation engineers who would work with you to solve your issues. Uh, this is more, uh, you know, kind of a detailed uh, flow chart on, you know, what you can do, how you can do. Um, I'll not probably go too much into detail, but uh, uh, let me see. It's pretty straightforward. You download the package, you know, go through the user guide in detail, uh, you know, decide whether you want to go for a virtual setup or a physical uh, setup. And then if you want a virtual setup, either you can get the image from VSD test drive or you can create your own virtual images locally. Copy the test suite to the driver computer and then uh, go through the user guide uh, to identify some of the scenarios that you want to do and do that configuration on your server. 
And then once that is done, you know, you, you decide whether you want to run against your implementation or Windows implementation to benchmark the results. And then once you run the tests, you know, you get, uh, you know, all the environment working and all that. Uh, then we have something called a scenario zero. I'll show it to you shortly. So what scenario zero does is a, it's a high level scenario which tests your en environment, right? Because for most part, some of these tests are very extensive. You don't want to jump into actual testing without ensuring that your scenario is set up well, right? Because some tests might take half an hour, but some tests might take five hours, and you don't want to, you know, run all these tests just to realize that, you know, some you know, some, something is missing in the environment, some configuration value or some, uh, you know, firewall or something, and then, you know, all of that effort has gone, uh, you know, in vain. So that, at least scenario zero is the one that you should do after configuring your test suite to make sure that you have the environment set up and it's working fine. And uh, you basically run the test suites and uh, the tests generate log and capture files. Um, Netmon captures, and then you can basically look at the test logs to figure out what has passed, what has failed. Uh, you can also look at uh, the RS, and I'll, I'll show you some of those details later as to how to identify failures and how to map the failure with a statement in the technical document. You can actually do a, you know, point-to-point, -point, uh, uh, you know, analysis. And uh, the, the final scenario is, hey, you know, if you want to add some of your own scenarios, uh, we do ship source code for the test suites. So, you know, you can feel free to uh, add your own scenarios, right, and, uh, you know, uh, basically use within your company. Uh, you can look at the EULA, the, uh, the license agreement for, you know, details on what you can and what you cannot do with the test suites, but at a higher level, you cannot distribute the test suites outside your company. But you are feel free, you know, you can feel free to use it within your company, make changes to the test suite and so on. Okay. So this is the uh, address wherein you have to go to pick up the test suites. Uh, I think some of you might already be familiar. I am sure some of you have already downloaded some beta bits from this uh, site. Uh, with that, let me switch to the demo part of actually downloading it. So this is a connect site, uh, connect.microsoft.com, uh, straightforward. Uh, you know, anyone accessing that site, this is what you typically see on the website. And uh, the only requirement is basically you sign in with a live ID. And uh, that's what you have to do. And then what would happen is you see a dashboard, like in case you have already registered to certain programs on Connect, then you see all those here. Uh, but if you have none, then probably this would be blank. But uh, the, the, the place where you would actually go and see is the directory, right, which is here. Uh, it has a list of various programs that uh, Microsoft offers, you know, uh, works with uh, public or, you know, some of it partners some beta programs, uh, programs that require, you know, feedback and so on and so forth. Um, so what you need to do is look for open specification test tools. That's, that's the hub wherein you find all the test suites. Now, um, there are a bunch of test suites that are already available, right? Uh, some are uh, partner specific, right? People who have volunteered to beta test, you know, some might see more. Uh, we have one to start with, which is like general public, right, which is this one, MSL SAT test suite. So you basically click there, and then uh, this, is a, uh, this is our hub page, uh, wherein uh, you'll have all links to, you know, all the, all the test suites that are available. Uh, There's this is a short summary of, uh, you know, what this page is about and uh, uh, what we are trying to do. And then there is a... Uh, downloads link on the left and uh, there's a survey section at the bottom you know it's it's a voluntary survey if you want you can definitely um, you know respond to it in fact uh, we'll we'll be adding some more surveys and you know it would be really nice if you can 
you know, help give all that feedback and help us make test suites better. Um, and there are some contact details there, uh, which is doc.help at microsoft.com. In addition to that, there is also a link uh, to channel 9, uh, which is basically a recording of this session or the past sessions that, that we have done, right? So you can go there. Uh, so if you want to, you know, actually go through the video again, right? Uh, you want to refresh the concepts or, you know, how you want to do and all that, you can basically go there. And that's where you'll see, you know, all this video. This is basically uh, the video that was done probably uh, in January for our uh, Active Directory uh, plug fest. So what you do is go to the download section, and here you'll see a list of all the test suites that are available, right? Again, as I said, based on whether you have volunteered for beta testing or not, you may see all of these or some of these, right? At the minimum, you should at least see one, right, which is purely public. So once you go there, it's pretty straightforward. You go to the, you know, test suite where you want to download and, you know, just download. Uh, basically, look at the uh, 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 reminder, which basically says you cannot redistribute. But apart from that, you know, uh, you can just download. So I'll skip the actual download part. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, so I, it's not really required. So once you download, what you see would be, uh, let me switch to a machine where I've downloaded. So you would download a zip file, right, uh, which is a package of all the prerequisites that are required for the test suite along with the test suite installer. So if you extract it, right, you'd see something like this. Um, it has a bunch of installers, uh, uh, things like the test suite, actual test suite itself, protocol test suite library. Now, th this specific version that you're seeing is a older format, but our new format would look, look slightly different. Uh, all the components would be there, but you have an additional um, file, which is basically uh, called a user guide, right? So th this is our latest format, and uh, most of the test suites will be in sync with this. So uh, you, you have installers for Spec Explorer. You have installer for what we call as protocol test suite library. And uh, Spec Explorer, Keith has already discussed about it, right? It's our tool uh, used to model uh, the test suites. Protocol test suite library is a set of uh, tools that we use internally. Uh, this contains the message generation framework. It contains what we call as protocol test framework, the actual framework which is used to run the tests. Uh, along with other libraries, you know, some encryption libraries or some other support libraries, utility libraries for the test suite. Um, and then you find two documents. One is the user guide, right, which is the document that you should first refer to. Uh, it contains all the basic information as to how to uh, install, run, configure, debug test suites, right? So this is just one document you would really need to get started. Uh, you also see the privacy statement basically describing, you know, what, what, um, uh, what attributes are captured in log files and all that. Uh, please do go through that to, you know, uh, understand what, what's being logged and all that. Uh, again, as I said, nothing is sent to Microsoft. It's all stored locally and it's used for debugging the test suites. Now, as I said, what, um, so the test suites have dependency on each of these tools, right? And it may so happen that a bunch of test suites are dependent on a specific version of tools. Like, for example, a test suite might depend on a specific version of Spec Explorer, a specific version of test suite framework, right? So what you have to keep in mind is basically uh, try to use the same versions of tools that come shipped with the package, right? Uh, we don't support yet, I mean, we don't support mix and match of tools, right? So you, you have to treat this as a package. 
And that's one more reason probably where you have to like use a clean machine approach, right? Use identify a clean machine, test machine, and you know identify and copy and uh, uh, install all these prerequisites. We don't support like you know cross referencing of uh, tools and all that. So once you have all that, um, probably it's not copied. Well, looks like what. updates over the network so let me do one thing i can download it again i'm sharing the yeah, i'm sharing the desktops across all these machines so probably there's a copy issue Yeah, as I said, um, the shared network, so the files are copied into a different subfolder, so that's the reason it's not able to find. So this is the installer that you try to run, and uh, it, it actually, before you run the test suite installer, so this one is the actual test suite installer, right? So what it does is it checks for dependencies. Now it's, it, it makes sure that all its dependencies are available on the machine before you proceed. So in this case, um, I have already made sure that all the installation is done and all the dependencies are available. But um, just for quick reference, I'll try to run another test suite just to go through the installation process. Having the same issue again. which is okay. I'll try to re-extract it to make sure that um, we have all the files in place. To take, just take a couple of minutes. Yes. So like any other installer, you have the EULA that you have to read and accept before proceeding. And as I mentioned, there's a privacy statement that uh, you'll have to go through and accept to go ahead and install the software. Now once you uh, get past those two steps, uh, you're presented with the screen um, wherein it, uh, you have option of installing on the driver computer where you run the test suite from, and then installing and configuring on the SAT or the target computer where you're trying to uh, test the implementation. Now, with Windows, what you can do is first run this installer on the client or the uh, driver computer, and then uh, go to the Windows server, right? And then uh, rerun this uh, uh, installer on that to run the uh, installation scripts. Now, if you're using directly against non-Windows, you, you don't have to do the second part, right? There are instructions on how to configure the SAT. Like, for example, non-Windows implementation, you can follow that, and I'll show you the document uh, on how to 
configure like you know for example if it's smb you may have to create some shares you might have to you know do certain tasks things like that right um, so for windows you can you know make use of the script and script would uh, do everything for you so as i said uh, if if there is a specific dependency it would check and say hey you know this requires you know so and so version please go ahead and install right um, we can do it right now or what i'll try to do is i'll just cancel it here and what i'll try to do is i'll try to run another test suite that i have configured already and before that, I just want to show this user guide to you. So this is your one quick reference guide that you should follow to at least run the test suite, you know, uh, out of the box, as in like, you know, with minimum configuration. Um, just follow this. Uh, it has some basic sections, like uh, what uh, what this test suite does, what protocol it applies to, uh, some sections on you know licensing and all that. The way it's organized is basically it has uh, what's called as a checklist, and it says you know hey you know uh, I want to download the test suite. What you have to do. You want to go check for the environment, what you have to do. You want to install software prerequisites, what you have to do. Set up the driver computer, blah, 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 right, whatever. Uh, all that information is there. So you can just follow it sequentially, or you can jump to the specific points. Like, you know, if you, if you just want to jump to a specific area, you can just do that. So for example, in this, in this case, you know, you want to set a uh, system under test, you can just jump over there, and then, you know, you can uh, continue from there. So once you install Test Suite, uh, there are basic things that you have to do. And that is configuring, configuring the Test Suite client or the driver, and then configuring the Test Suite, uh, uh, the, the system under test. And you have uh, pretty uh, much all the details that are required to do, do those tasks. You can just follow those tasks. So what I'll do at this point is I'll jump to the actual installation location where the test suite has uh, been installed and go through what actually uh, gets installed and uh, is available. So this is a basic folder structure that you see for the test suites. Uh, by default, it, uh, it installed test suites on C. Uh, under a folder called Microsoft Protocol Tests, right? And then you have the test suite, uh, you know, name, if SMB, SMB2, whatever, you have more than, you know, you have a list of those. But as I said, you know, we recommend uh, running one test suite per machine because it keeps things clean, right? Uh, and then you have a version number so that it's easier for you in case, you know, get into some issues. You can actually refer this version when you talk with uh, escalation engineers in doc help. So this is the actual location wherein all the contents of the test suite get copied. Uh, basically have a bunch of folders. Let me change something. So batch file uh, folder is where you know all the batch files are copied. Now these batch files are um, they can be used to run specific scenarios, right? So what we have done is identify you know those smaller scenarios and try to create small batch files, right? Wherein you can run specific tests, right? So either you have option to run all tests together, which you can still do, but you know some of these tests they require long, long time, right? You know some. Some require like as much as five hours, eight hours, depending on the test suite, right? Or identify those specific uh, uh, scenarios that you're more interested in, right? Then uh, you have the bin uh, folder, wherein uh, you know the, the, these are the binaries that are basically required to run the test suite. So this is the core binaries for the test suite. 
and then you find two subfolders here one is called non windows and uh, other one is windows these are specific scripts that are required to configure uh, the test suite uh, uh, from more from like you know the, the server perspective the set perspective right uh, you may not find scripts for all protocols under non windows but you know to the extent possible we try to you know create scripts there or at least create some dummy scripts there so that you know what to do with instructions like you know for example you may have to create a folder share you might have to create let's say join a domain or you know something else based on the protocol so uh, all that information would be there then uh, you have this folder where all the documents are kept uh, this is really important because uh, it it has a bunch of documents uh, the first one being the technical document now one thing that's uh, important is all the test suites are based against a specific version of technical document right uh, and the documents keep changing right because you know the protocols change the document change also documents change because of some bugs issues found in the document so so it's an ongoing process right and what we do as a process is we say hey let's benchmark on this document because you know we can't keep updating it on a daily or weekly or even a monthly basis we say hey let's take this build of the document and write uh, test suites against it so this is the version of doc that we uh, you know ship along with the package because uh, if if you look at the latest one that's available on msdn you might find some discrepancies with respect to this document and that document uh, and uh, the reason why you have this document in addition is because you want to look at specific requirements that are passing or failing you can actually refer this document that way you know it's more handy uh, then you have quick start guide um, again uh, for 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 convenience uh, then you have uh, release notes which uh, like any other reloads release notes give some last minute issues if there are any bugs uh, they'll talk about those right uh, this doesn't have too many luckily but if if at all there are any last known issues or breaking issues or you know anything of uh, importance they are documented here then what you have is a requirement specification in a way this is the corner stone or the, this 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 is like this is kind of a primary key if you will right in in database parlance for the entire test suite and the reason for that is every requirement right that we collect verify capture is stored here you have a, a table right with certain fields like requirement id doc section description you know and some other fields uh, these are very important when you actually look at the results and you want to correlate the the pass and fail test suites with the actual technical document right so for example right you have an id for a requirement and it says let's say for example uh, take this right uh, requirement number ms smb2 r2502 it says hey when in, when the smb protocol is negotiated on this connection there's no in, uh, inheritance of the base smb protocol state right so what it says is hey we have picked this right and um, it is from the section 2.1 right so if you actually go to section 2.1 you'll actually find that statement there right so it's mostly quoted from the document i'll actually not do that but uh, just for the information then there are other uh, fields which basically tell like pass neg these these are the the classification of the requirement was a positive requirement or a negative scenario that we are trying to validate and then uh, the scenario has uh, if if there's a, a field populated it talks about the scenario number then you have a behavioral section which says you know whether it's a protocol behavior or for some should and may requirements whether it's windows specific behavior right that you that you can find in the appendix then it talks about the scope whether it's you know the client endpoint server endpoint or both uh, there there's a you know priority uh, given for each of those requirements and then you have a field which says whether that requirement is a normative requirement or an informative requirement right and then you have another field which says uh, you know whether it's a verified requirement unverified requirement or it's unverifiable requirement right because you might have certain requirements which are implementation specific which you know doesn't necessarily send anything on the wire then in those requirements are not verified because you know it's it's implementation specific right so you don't have to really 
worry about that. So, uh, you know, ev everything is commented. And then, you know, if, if we have made certain uh, decisions on covering a requirement or not covering those requirement, we typically mention it there, right? You know, saying, uh, this is the specific reason why we can't because, see, uh, the other thing is there might also be certain scenarios or requirements, even though they are verifiable, we may not verify them uh, for various reasons, right? Uh, either extreme complexity, right, you know, just verifying one requirement out of 10,000 requirement means like you have to spend three months time, right? So uh, that's one, one uh, area. The other area might be, you know, it's very, very complex to verify that, right? So there might be a few other uh, reasons for not doing, but you know, if, if such uh, decision was taken, right, we, we basically put it over there, right. And then uh, if you look at another tab, we, we have what is called as a scenario of matrix, which identifies a requirement to a specific scenario, right. So you, you, you want to know which requirement is covered in which scenario, that's where you look at. Okay, we have covered about the requirement specification doc. Now, let us talk about the test design doc, right. So this is also important, but it is more important in terms of designing a test suite, right. If you, if only thing that you care about is just running the test suite, probably, you know, you may, you know, not refer it so much, but let us say you want to design or alter a test suite or you want to change something in the model or you know, something about adapters Keith has just talked about, like let's say you want to implement your own adapters, it has all the interface definitions and you know, uh, all the discussion around how you do certain things. It also has some, uh, uh, you know, discussion on whether, you know, uh, a model based approach was chosen or whether it's more manual approach was chosen and so on, right. Uh, and if certain approach was chosen, why it was chosen, what are the pros and cons and all that. So this is more useful if you really want to get into the test suite, change certain things in the test suites, modify, you know, adapt and so on and so forth. But uh, it, it, it's pretty detailed, right, and exhaustive. Uh, some, of, some, of, some of the docs can run into hundreds of pages too, right. It talks about every specific scenario, what is accomplished by that scenario, what is the scenario number. Um, it also talks about the steps, right, each scenario does, right. For example, if you take scenario S2, talks about a client connects to the SMB server, the client sets up a session, blah, 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 client connects to name pipe, and so on, right. Um, so it talks about uh, what are the operations that are involved, uh, what we are trying to check, and so on, right. All those details are there. And it also has certain um, uh, diagrams, uh, like block diagrams sometimes, which, which talk about, like, you know, the design, and so on, and so forth. Uh, you know, this, this is basically exposing all the interfaces that are implemented by the adapter, right. And uh, it would also give you a state diagram from the model, right, as to what is the sequence of operations that's happening uh, in that specific scenario. And you can use this in conjunction with the, uh, the source code to identify those specific scenarios or you want to change some models, so there are machine definitions and all that over here, you know, you can go through and then uh, if at all you want to change something, use this uh, as a resource and uh, change. And uh, for most part, you will not have this uh, except for some of the older test suites because a part of this is already available here. This is more exhaustive document, especially for Windows. You want to um, reconfigure Windows test suite, uh, 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 sorry, Windows system under test. It, it has all the extensive details on like how to join a domain, how to, let's say, you know, disable a firewall, how to create a certificate. Know all all those details, and it's more Windows specific. So with that, okay, let let me cover the additional uh, uh, parts as well. So scripts is uh, a folder where you have all the scripts used by um, uh, the 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 installer, right, on both the client as well as the server. Like you know, you want to uh, make certain modifications and so on. So this is where um, uh, this is where it will be useful. Uh, particularly, uh, you know, this specific file called paramconfig. Let me launch in a notepad. This is a place where you 
you know, set basic uh, information like, you know, what is the domain name, uh, whether it's you're running an IPv4 or IPv6, whether it's a domain configuration or a workstation, a workgroup configuration, uh, what is the user ID name and, uh, you know, the password for the machine that you're trying to access, right? All that information is given. So what script does is it, it takes this a file and configures the environment for you, right? So that, you know, that, that the test environment is ready. Uh, there's another important configuration file that I'll probably show you once we start running some test suite. But the last uh, folder is actually the source code for the entire test suite. So uh, the test suite is there with you know all the dependencies and all that, except um, w only one area, and that is if you are using some third-party tools, right, for our development, then you might actually have to download those by your own, right? Because we don't have redistribution rights. This is more for like compiling, for example, let's say, you know, if you are using ASN1 um, and we are using ASNN1 compiler, then, um, you know, uh, there, there, there will be a dependency on that if you actually want to compile and regenerate the test suites. But if you just want to run, you know, you can run because there's runtime already, right? So, uh, I can open this here or I can go to another machine actually. Let me go to another machine and uh, doing demo. Before that, uh, I'll just go through the slides. If there's anything before we actually go into the demo. So most of this is uh, already covered. We went to the connect site, downloaded, talked about uh, the folder structure, um, what every folder contains. Yeah. Uh, so, so we, uh, before we actually jump into the, uh, the demo, uh, key uh, points here while running the test suites. So you have two ways you can run the test suite. One is through command line, right, uh, which is pretty straightforward. And the other way is through Visual Studio, right. Um, there are benefits for both. Uh, command line, you know, it's uh, simple and sweet. You run, run it through command line. Click a click a button and then it runs the test suite, generates output for you. That's where you know it, it's done. Uh, through Visual Studio, you know the flexibility I'll, I'll show you quickly is uh, you have a way through Visual Studio Test Manager to actually select visually which tests you want to run, which scenarios you want to run, and then run. And then not only do that, but you know obviously since it's a full-fledged debugging environment, you can actually set breakpoints. Uh, for all the failures, let's say you want to see the stack trace and all that, you can do it. And, uh, you know, if you actually want to modify something, you know, you can still uh, do it in Visual Studio. So uh, command line is for more repetitive kind of thing. Let's say, you know, you want to employ these in your test labs, wherein, you know, you want to do it on a, a periodic basis, uh, then you can use that. Uh, or else you can use Visual Studio when you are in more... Um, uh, kind of, you know, debugging mode, right, uh, active development mode, or when you want to investigate issues and so on. The other thing is you have flexibility to run one scenario or all scenarios or some scenarios through Visual Studio. You can check which of the scenarios that you want to run. And each scenario is self-contained, right? Uh, and uh, the other thing about the scenario is when we try to group scenarios, we try to identify a specific um, uh, let me put it this way. So, so we try to align with a generic scenario, right, that you can build, right, a typical, uh, more general daily use kind of scenario. But it might not be possible for all scenarios, right? Some scenarios might not align themselves to more specific user scenarios, right? So that's something that you have to, you know, keep in mind. And th so, so that's one uh, limitation. But you can overcome that by using the source code to build your own scenarios, right? So, you know, you, you want to create your own scenarios, yes, feel free to do so. Use source code or use model and try to uh, build your own scenarios. And then uh, using code, since you have code, you can compile and build, except in a scenario where we are using a third-party uh, software and, uh, you know, we don't have redistribution rights for, you know, that software, right? 
uh, for most part it's ASN and it will be mentioned clearly in the document if there is some dependency, but for most part to run test suites you will not have any such dependencies. And then you know you can once test suites are run you can trace results and map them to the requirements right and TDs. We can we can take a quick example. So what I will try to do is I um, will not go too much into detail into any protocol because we have sessions dedicated for every test suite uh, you know f next two days. So you know uh, we have uh, Tarun, Shalu and Sabrina and uh, uh, all our test suite developers who will be focusing on a specific test suite. Uh, every day uh, for the next two days, right? So we have a thing for three or four such sessions. But what I'll try to do is I'll try to touch on some of the important areas, you know, like how you can uh, run and how you can debug just for overall uh, uh, familiarity. So with that, uh, let me switch the computer. So uh, th th this environment I'm picking up from the rack. So you know all of you have access to these racks, right? So I'm I'm pick picking one instance from the rack. So what I see here, you'll be able to see the exact same thing in your labs, right? And uh, again, as I said, like you know, if you want to build something uh, from scratch, you know, feel free to download from the website. Once you go back to your premises, you know, you can use build uh, stuff from scratch too, right? But we have configured all these test suites for you know you to save some time and then. Uh, quickly run test suites. So this is again the same uh, folder structure that I have shown you earlier. Um, we have a bunch of test suites on this machine, uh, DFS, DFSNM, FSA, SMB. So once a test suite gets installed, what you actually see is this on the desktop. It might get a little confused because you see so many. So let me try to move them. Um, I'll not delete those. Just to make sure that uh, they'll be required for other test fits. Okay, I think we are good. So this is what you typically see on a desktop, right? You have a quick start guide. This is the shortcut to the quick start guide. Then uh, you have a folder pointer which points to the location, um, shortcut which points to the location where all the test suite artifacts are installed. And then um, you have a couple of shortcuts. Uh, one like uh, which which says you know run all the server endpoint test test cases, um, run important scenarios right that we have handpicked. Uh, then you know the other scenarios that are remaining, so the lesser important uh, scenarios or less prioritized scenarios that we have picked, and then more importantly, what we have uh, called as scenario zero test case. Right. As I was telling you earlier, uh, scenario zero test case is uh, important because uh, once you run the installation and configure everything, right, uh, you want to make sure that all the configuration has been done properly. Right, everything is set up properly in terms of you know IPs, passwords, sharing folders, the network, uh, you know, as such, right, network connectivity, firewalls, you know, all those kind of things. Right, you don't want to launch a five-hour test suite just to realize that something uh, simple is missing and then you have to redo the whole thing, right? So this, this is more useful for that. So, uh, so before actually I run this, right, I promised you to show something else and that is actual configuration. So there are two configurations, right? I have shown you one configuration which is um, configuring the server as well as client properties, the param config that I've shown you earlier, right, which, which is in the scripts file, right. Um, let's see. Should have opened a notepad. Okay, anyway, doesn't matter. 
So you know, the, the, this is basic information, right? Like you know, what what's the domain? Uh, you know, whether the test suite uses a domain configuration or workgroup configuration, and so on. Uh, you know, IP version, whether you want to run it in IPv4 or v6 environment. Uh, you know, if there's a specific domain uh, that you have to be part of, then you you give the domain name and other you know uh, pretty basic relevant details, right? This is used by script to configure the SAT as well as the client. And then you give certain additional information like you know where you want the log files to go uh, and so on. Now this is more on the configuration part. Now on the test suite uh, execution uh, front, right? you have a couple of uh, other uh, parameters, uh, sorry, uh, configuration files. One is the deployment file, right? Um, which is more, again, um, specific in terms of the infrastructure, like the ports that you're using, again, you know, the username, password, um, what server you're using, right? Because, you know, uh, some of this we track, let, let's say, you know, if you say Windows Server 2008 R2, we trigger only those tests that are relevant to that, right? If you say non-Windows, right, then we may have a specific set, right? Similarly, you know, if you say Windows 2008, you know, it might have different set and so on. Similarly, you have a bunch of other values that you you know you'll have to uh, select, right? You know, SMB2 security package is uh, you know flag signing required, uh, you know various other uh, properties, right? Pipes, what is the shared folder that you have on the server? Um, you know, if, if there's a printer, what's the printer uh, name? My DFS path, you know, blah blah. All those details are here, right? What is the stack max? Uh, Output size, search patterns, you know, all specific. Uh, and, and this is more specific to the protocol, right? I mean, the, these values will be different if you're using some other protocol, like, you know, let's say uh, LDAP or, you know, Kyle or NRPC, you know, all, uh, most. So there might be some which are pretty common, like machine name, IP address, and all that, but most of them, they are more protocol specific, right? So you have to look at this list, and based on your implementation, based on uh, yeah, your logistics, like you know the, the machine name and so on, you can uh, change the values. Also, um, at the end, you see another section, right, which talks about some should may requirements, right. Uh, most of you might be familiar with this terminology, right? Should in a TD refers to those requirements which typically. Uh, should be followed, but Windows may make an exemption, right? For example, you know, Windows 7 might do it some other way, right? But for most part, you know, all the other versions do, and you know, it's advisable to do. Similarly, may requirements are like, you know, hey, most of the versions they don't do, but there might be an exception where, let's say, Windows NT may do it in some some specific way, right? So all such uh, requirements, because since they are partner. I mean, implementation specific, there is no way for us to, you know, hard code and say, hey, it has to be like this, right? So here is where you configure, right? So whether you are implementing such requirement or not, right, you can set true or false over here. And then based on that, the test suite would uh, execute. Then there's another section um, which which is more on the bugs because as, as I've mentioned, while we develop test suites, there might be certain open issues on the document, right? Uh, wherein we may file a bug, which we call as TDI, technical document issue, uh, on, on the document itself. So what we do is like a temporary workaround. We basically put it over there and say, hey, you know, if this is fixed or not, this bug is fixed or not. If it is fixed, we set it to true, and then the test suite would take, you know, cater to that. If it's false, then, you know, that's how it's taken care of, right? It either skips or uh, runs as per, you know, the, the current definition or the current spec in the uh, document. Um, similarly, on the server, uh, um, th there's, there's another uh, um, configuration file, right, that, that you can set for log. I mean, this, this, this specific uh, is, is for more um, of logistics of uh, event, not really event, but uh, log syncs, right, you know, where you want to redirect your uh, logs, right, to an XML file or a text file and so on. Let's say due to some reason, um, you don't want to generate logs, right, for whatever reason, then you can basically clear this off and test suite will not log anything, but you know, it would only 
report saying, hey, you know, this is passed or this is failed. Uh, the, the, so the, this might be relevant in scenarios where you know let's say you're running on uh, you know some i don't know some partner customer uh, machines or something and you don't want to collect all that pii information you don't want to store all that information in logs probably you can i mean this is one such example i can think of wherein you can uh, you know comment out this and then it will not log anything but you'll definitely get the results though okay having gone through uh, the configuration, the next step is to run this, right? Run your uh, scenario zero, which checks for your environment. Let's see, I mean, the network has been crazy today with uh, so many instances running. Let's hope it passes. Okay. At least we know that network is working fine and the environment is set up before we run anything. Okay, so again, as I was saying, right? So you have a bunch of command uh, commandlets, if you will, um, that you can launch directly from the desktop, right? The other one is to run all the test suites, which probably will not do it right now because it takes probably five hours to run everything. Uh, but what we'll do is, uh, before we open visuals today, I just want to show you the location of all these uh, commandlets, right? Like all these batch files. If you want, you can you know, sp specifically run each of those individually. Or a better approach would probably be to open Visual Studio, and I'll show you the solution file. I mean, those, who are, those of you who are familiar with uh, Visual Studio, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there is a SLN file, Visual Studio solution file, that you have to launch to open the entire solution. So it will launch all the dependencies, you know, the model, the uh, the actual test generated code and all that right so this this is the uh, solution file right each of those folders or some of those folders have their own projects uh, like for example model is a separate project then there's a test suite which is a separate project but by opening solution you open everything right so these are the folder these are the projects right uh, so this is the model that um, you know Keith was talking about in the morning this this happens to uh, uh, to be a uh, model based protocol and what you can actually do is uh, it, this this operation is very resource intense so probably i'll not uh, generate models but um, you know uh, our engineers can help you uh, not this one actually Uh, in the lab, they, they can show you how to explore the models, right? This, this is very, very resource intensive operation because it generates the entire state model for every machine that you define. You can visually see, right, the, the entire uh, state diagram, right? And also, if there are slices of model, you can see those two. Uh, let me quickly see if, you, if I can. Should be a model. Okay. Um, I am seriously thinking whether I should do that or not. Uh, okay. Let me do this at the end because you know if it takes a lot of time to explore, then you know we don't want to get blocked. So I'll show that at the end. Uh, but meanwhile, what I'll try to do you uh, do is uh, show you uh, how to look at the test manager, test case manager, and look at various tests that you have. I think I look, clicked the wrong link. Is this uh, so this is the entire list of scenarios that you have in the test suite right so I have selected only a few but uh, I can remove this there should be a way to refresh
which is a way to show, show all the tests. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought clearing that won't. So this is the this is the entire list of uh, tests that uh, that are available. All the scenarios that are available. Let's filter it back so that we can select a simple one. So let's say you know we want to run this specific test, right? Which is tree tree connect. You can select and then just say run check test. So you can actually see the result, you want to see the logs, you can actually see that, you know, let something, I mean, all, all the stack trace you can find. And if something fails, then you can actually point, like, you know, like any other debugger to the specific case where, you know, something has passed or failed, right? But uh, this is the log within the Visual Studio environment that you can actually see. Um, let's say if you want to fail something for okay, let me just go to the file actual file and configuration file right do you have some? and this is more like a very fundamental failure because you are not even connecting right yeah, you, you want to authenticate. So basically what I wanted to show was yeah. you can actually go through, but more specifically what I'm trying to find is, you know, all these requirements, right, that, that got failed, right? That's what something that I wanted to point out because if something is failing, you know exactly what is failing. And then based on this actual requirement number, you can go back to your RS document uh, in the docs. Don't think we have the Excel file here, but yeah, I think you get the idea. I can switch back to this machine. Right. So if some requirement fail, I can basically look at that requirement value and figure out, you know, what the document says and, you know, what's the behavior that we are having or seeing on the test suite. So that's, that's how you basically debug. I um, think we don't have much in terms of, again, as I said, so we have specific sessions dedicated to each of these test suites. Uh, and uh, engineers can probably go through in detail on how to run, uh, debug, and uh, fix issues in the test suite. A uh, couple of things that, that I wanted to show here are, one is what uh, Keith was mentioning, right? The generated code, right? Model generated code. So you, this is a project which was generated by the model, and as you can see, all this code is generated by the tool, right? All the scenarios are defined through model, and you can find a scenario for every test suite. Uh, for, a, for every scenario, you can find a file. Uh, and you can always loop it back to the design document, like, for example, this specific scenario, right? S18, right? Um, again, let me switch back. I mean, 
yeah, one way to see is, you know, code as a documentation, but if you really want the real document, right, then you can go back to the design doc, right, and, you know, go to the scenario S18, which would be somewhere Let's see. Yeah. You can do a S18 somewhere. Yeah. So it talks about uh, no right, uh, right without access. Similarly, all these requirements, uh, all these scenarios are enlisted here. And each scenario is described as I uh, showed a while ago, right? What each scenario does. Uh, what is the operation? For example, if you go to S18, so it gives you like higher higher uh, view of steps. So sometimes you know they they, they kind of um, take a subtask from other scenarios. So in this case, it says, "Hey, complete all the steps as defined in scenario one, and then you know do blah 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 right at a high level." So at least you know when you're looking at the code to figure out what you're trying to accomplish at a high level, and then basically dig through the details like you know if we are su really successfully able to cover that scenario or not right so there is connectivity right across all the artifacts right whether it's scenario whether it's requirement whether it's modeled uh, you know machine or whatever right you can always loop back right so each of each of the artifacts are connected um, one last thing i'll do before i'll try to explore the model is show you the offline log files that are created. Uh, there should be a logs folder. Uh, so all the logs are time stamped. So you know if you have run umpteen number of times you know exactly um, you know what uh, what the test run results are, and you can go through all those details. We have a more verbose text log. Which will probably take a little while. It's very verbose. And by the way, you can set uh, the uh, uh, level of logging. So you want uh, to be very verbose, or you want only critical bugs, uh, critical messages to be logged, and so on. Right. So even looking at the log, right, you can actually tell if something passed or failed. Right. So it says, like, you know, if you look at this, right, check succeeded. Right. Uh, what is the requirement? Right. Here it talks about uh, security buffer length must indicate length of output token, so on and so forth, right? And says, you know, what is the actual requirement number associated with it? So even though you don't do it, uh, like don't run the test suite in Visual Studio, you can still track and trace all the requirements, right? Uh, if something fails, it, uh, it even logs, like, you know, what's the expected value, what's the actual value, but, you know, you can, you know, as well refer in the TD as well, right? So uh, that, that should be fine in any way, right? So, uh, logs in conjunction with the code as well as the other thing that we have not seen uh, probably is the netmon capture right um, what you can do uh, where are we in terms of time I think we have like 10 minutes more so I'll try to do this too What I'll try is what I'm trying to show you is uh, about the TSAP packets that Keith has mentioned, right? The beacons that we send, like the the pseudo protocol, right, to to mark the starting and ending of the test suite, right? So this this is another um, 
a venue for, for you to actually debug the test suites, right? I mean, you have the logs, you have the test results, and then still you want to actually look at the actual NetMont traces to figure out what message is going on the wire, what is the value that you have set, right? Then um, that's, this, this is another way. Um, let me go back to Visual Studio, uh, go back to this guy, or let me run the simple thing rather than. Too many windows. So there is one limitation I just wanted uh, to let you know, and that is um, the binaries that are generated by Visual Studio versus the command line, they are not same as of now, right? So um, uh, the binaries that are pointed by the command line are when you try to recompile, right? So these source, so you know, don't expect, or rather expect to see different results in case you have made some modifications to the test suite, right? because uh, then you have to create your own shortcut. I mean, it's, it's pretty trivial though, but still. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, just wanted to show the TSAP before. I think I should stop it. Um, I, can, I can apply as MB2, but so the, this this is a beacon, right? That you can see, right? Uh, test case name, what is the scenario that you are trying to run? Uh, basic metadata, like you know, which is the server, which is the client, right? Uh, what is the scenario that you are running? Whether it's in progress or it, if it's pass, you know, it will tell you as pass, and then. Um, I mean, you get the idea, right? So essentially it's like a marker within the uh, Netmon capture and then you can investigate uh, you know, at what stage, what is going, what you're trying to do at every stage, and then what's the message that is following, whether you have verified. So uh, in addition to the log file, you want to actually look at the traces and figure out what's going on, you can do that. So this, this is another useful way to debug if uh, the, the text log doesn't provide you with adequate information. So with that, uh, we'll switch back. Yeah, so that uh, kind of brings uh, us to the end of the demo. Uh, so these are the links. And yeah, one thing that, uh, other thing that Keith wanted to show was the Spec Explorer that I was planning to show anyways. Let me kill this guy. So this is, this, is, this is the updated link for Spec Explorer. Uh, as Kit was saying, you, you have all the documentation. Now if you go to the facts section, this is where you'll find all the videos for Spec Explorer modeling. Looks like my connection somehow got dropped, which is fine, but uh, I think I've opened it somewhere. Yeah, so this is where you find all the videos, training sessions and all if, in case you're interested in Spec Explorer. So again, this is public. Um, you know, as long as you have Visual Studio, even an evaluation version, you can download this and, uh, you know, uh, make use of it. And also, as I said, like, you know, the test suite package itself comes with uh, the version of Spec Explorer, uh, Spec Explorer against which the test suite uh, is designed. So, you know, you can use that too, right? But this, this link you can use, like, you know, if you're more interested in Spec Explorer tool, 
uh, and you want to investigate more, uh, you know, kind of focused on the Spec Explorer as such, right? Then you'll get to know about the latest features and uh, other demos and samples and all that. Um, again, this is a connect set that we were going through. This is the video location, and uh, th this is the VHD test drive uh, uh, program that I was mentioning earlier. Like, in case you don't want to uh, build your client and Windows set, but rather you know want to use an existing version, you can basically go there, uh, register, and then you know download a VHD. Yeah, my internet link is broken on my laptop though, but. Uh, you know, you, you get an idea. I mean, just download all this, and then it's a one-time download, right? I mean, that's the good thing about virtualization is you download the image once, you create child snapshots, and you're good to go, right? You don't have to keep on redoing this child images and, I mean, sorry, physical installations, and, you know, if something goes wrong, you don't have to figure out, spend a lot of time, right? Just create one, and, and that's how we are maintaining our lab, too, right? Whatever you're seeing on the lab, they're all virtualized, all virtual images. Yeah. And a couple of other links to Visual Studio evaluation. Um, and then, yeah, Windows 7, if you, if you don't have license and still want to get started on test suites, you can go to this link and you can get an enterprise version of Visual Studio, which will be valid for 90 days, and then you can extend for another uh, 90 plus 90, 180 days, right? So about 270 days you can get uh, the evaluation version of Visual Studio. Um, one final thing is uh, there's a fact document that comes uh, that, that will be hosted shortly, but Daryl can provide you with that document. It uh, goes through some of the basic questions, uh, you know, what you can do, cannot do, uh, you know, how to do certain things, what are the links, and so on. Please do go over the fact document as well. I um, think this brings to the end of this session. So you guys have any questions, feel, feel free to, yeah. Exactly, I mean, it, it, that's a good question. And the question is, um, is, it to pos is it possible to specify the test runtime? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so all the expected and actual values are logged, uh, Tarun, correct me, only if they're failed, right? Or Yeah, so we have some 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 parameters in PTF config file that you can increase, and you know, so there are some sleeps that you can increase, and you know, we'll accept, you know, we'll expect a packet after that much delay, if there's any latency in the network. So does this answer your question? Yeah. So we have PTF config entries, and you can you know modify that as such. But so John, typically we wait at least for I think 30 to 40 minutes, uh, 40 seconds for for a packet. If it doesn't come then you know we bail out now uh, so if you're asking if so does this answer your question first right uh, so okay i i think i got your question now so what you want to do is you want to preempt the response time right you know how soon i can get a response right Yeah, it, it's really tricky, right? Because uh, the runtime might depend. So one way is, you know, the, the weights, right? You know, uh, but then it's like kind of workaround, right? But it's not like solving the primary uh, purpose. But the trick with that is, you know, how do you determine, right? Because you have network latencies, you have machine performance itself, right? So how do you know, let's say, you know, you're expecting response within five minutes, right? Uh, how can you make sure it, it is around five minutes, right? Can be 10 minutes too, unless the protocol says, hey, I would time out like after waiting till let's say, you know, five minutes, right? Then yes, you know, they, and, and for such requirements, we have test suite, uh, test cases, right? But if, if the question is, hey, you know, uh, I am expecting a response for my test suite and just wanted to know like, you know, when should I bail out? Then you have more, you don't have a very accurate way of doing it apart from using sleeps, right? So you know it's more more of trial and error sometimes, and or you using some event. Uh, you know, right. yeah, and there's there's one setting in, in you know our t test framework where you know you can say test timeout like you know 
I'll wait for a particular test for say, you no, know, maybe one minute. But it's not particular to a particular API, specific to a particular API. It's specific to a particular test case. So if I don't get a reply, you know, and it, it, is, it is generic for all the test, test cases. It's not specific to a particular test case. So if I specify here one, then all my test cases will wait only for one minute. If I don't get a reply in one minute, they will bail out. Yeah, please. Yes. No, we don't have that setting as such. We don't have that setting. Because we, we don't test each and individual API as such. We test scenarios in one test case. You, if you want, you can go and extend a model. You know, you can you can have like each scenario testing one API or one request and response, and then this this timer will come into picture. See, the other thing I uh, want to point out, right, in a kind of a generic statement is, um, again, it goes back to the history and why we started this, uh, writing this test suite is, right, is, is more in terms of verifying the technical document, right? It's not so much focused on testing the functionality. Like, you know, let's say I'm a product guy, right, trying to, test my implementation, right? Then I have, you know, so many scenarios, right? You know, I want to look at the performance, I want to look at security, I want to, you know, do all this fuzzing, you know, all sorts of, uh, sorts of things, right? But, but the focus here is entirely different. It's more of protocol validation, right? That's where it ends. In fact, it's more geared towards, you know, verification of implementation against the technical document. That's, that's where it starts and that where, that's where it ends. Now, having said that, what I also want to add is just by, Making use of tool like Spec Explorer, right? You can tinker with the model, make modifications to the model, right? And then achieve a lot of other things, right? Because, you know, let's say there, there are concepts called constraints and all that in modeling, right? So what you can say is, hey, rather than applying all these constraints, right, let it run indefinitely till it crashes, right? Or you find, you know, some memory allocation issue or something, right? So you can do things like that, right? You can run long haul stress, you can, uh, you know, introduce some fuzzing in between. So you can make use of Spec Explorer to derive more tests out of the existing test suites. But as such, right, by design, these test suites uh, are only geared towards, like, you know, checking the accuracy of the document against a given implementation. Any, any other questions? Okay, then, uh, thank you, and... Uh, uh, so for the next two days, um, we have yes, test suite specific, protocol specific test suites, and we'll all be around, like, you know, you have any questions about specific test suite, or more in specific, like, you know, you have any questions on the release as such, uh, you know, any, any questions related to that, or if you're not able to access the test suite, uh, as I was saying, right, at least you, you should be able to access one because it's public now, right, and we'll be uh, uploading some more, but uh, we don't, kind of give timelines uh, exactly right now, but you'll, you'll see more and more test suites. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions around that, feel, uh, feel uh, free to you know, uh, ask us. And then you can always uh, use doc help for you know, any questions uh, on the test suites and support. So now, Maruthi mentioned a couple of references, the, the, the fact document, and we also have another VHD user's guide. So if you want to know the details, well, how, how to set up, what is the purpose of Hyper-V for supporting a virtual environment? We can give you an example of that. It might be a useful illustration, although you're certainly free to use VMware or any of the other uh, virtualization environments that you particularly use. That, that's fine. The reference is also this presentation, along with all of the event presentations, are recorded and posted to Channel 9 at the locations that Maruthi referred to. So you can get to all of the recordings. They will be posted subsequent to the event, and you'll have an email on that, uh, following beyond the documents that we'll send you. Uh, and those documents will also be posted through our open specifications uh, site here in the near future, along with the link to the public release that Mar Maruthi referred to on our open specifications um, website. 